Welcome everybody to my next video in the series on probability and statistics. I am Dr. Lathram and today we will be talking about moment generating functions. So now let's begin with some definitions that shouldn't seem too terribly foreign to us. If we have a random variable y, then the kth moment about the origin is given by the expected value of y to the kth power. And this will be defined for k being any positive integer. We can also define the kth moment about the mean, or the kth central moment, first by taking the expected value of y, which we are familiar with as being our mu, then for the kth central moment, we'll take the expected value of y minus mu to the kth power. Again, k is any positive integer. So for their mean, we're familiar with that just being the expected value of y. The variance of a random variable y is really the second central moment about the mean. Okay. And, of course, our standard deviation is just going to be our square root of the variance. A couple of other notions that you typically see discussed in probability and statistics are skewness and kurtosis. So to formally define those, if we got a random variable y, and then the skew skewness of the distribution for y is defined to be the expected value of this expression y minus mu over sigma to the third power, where mu is going to be the expected value and sigma is going to be the standard deviation. The kurtosis is defined to be the expected value of y minus mu over sigma raised to the fourth power. So quite naturally, the, the skewness and kurtosis have geometric um, implications. So as far as skewness goes, um, uh, skewness being zero means that we've got something that's very symmetric about the mean. A positive skewness that our tail for our distribution is skewed way to the right. Um, negative skewness, our tail is skewed to the left. For Kurtosis. Kurtosis gives us an indication of how peaked our particular distribution is. So a lower kurtosis means that our distribution is kind of going to be flat. We've got larger tails for our distribution. For a higher kurtosis, um, we've got a much more peaked distribution and we don't have as many observations out, um, out along the tails of our distribution. Now we come to something that will be of, really it's going to be a workhorse for us when we're in our discussion of um, families of distribution, and that's the moment generating function. So if y is a random variable, then the moment generating function of y is a new function of a new variable t. And what it is, is the expected value of e to the ty. So the moment generating function is then said to exist if there's a positive constant b such that the moment generating function is finite for the absolute value of t less than or equal to b. So what this should really kind of remind you of is kind of taking you back to um, probably a calc 2 where you were talking about series expansions of functions. And so if we look at the connection between the moment generating function and our power series expansion of e to the x. So just to kind of remind you of what that looked like, that e to the x was going to be the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial x to the k. And so if we use that power series expansion in our... Um, definition of expected value, well we've got e to the ty as being the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the ty f of y dy, where f of y is just the PDF for our distribution. 
Now if we substitute in our power series expansion for e to the ty, um, kind of rearrange some terms so we'll assume some convergence properties and we'll be able to take that summation outside the integral sign you know, 1 over k factorial well, t to the k and then minus infinity to infinity of y to the k f of y dy. Well this is what we mean by our expected value of y to the k. And so what we end up with is really a power series expansion in, in the variable t and the coefficients of that power series expansion are our individual moments um, of y to the k. And so what this allows us to do is to give us a calculus way um, because we can differentiate power series term by term then the derivative the, der the consecutive derivatives of our moment generating function give us our moments which that's going to be an incredibly powerful useful way of us to get characterizations of our um, families of distributions so a couple of theorems that will really kind of give you a notion of the of the strength of moment generating functions um, the first one is the inversion theorem for moment generating functions now what the inversion theorem says is that if y is a random variable with a moment generating function m of t and m of t is finite in some open interval then the distribution of y is completely determined by m so if we've got a particular distribution it's got a unique moment generating function if we know the moment generating function if we know the form for the moment generating function then that also uniquely determines the um, distribution and so these things are kind of two different ways of, of looking distribution looking at distributions and that they are really one one and only one thing um, so that will be a powerful thing the second thing is that if we have sequences of moment generating functions and for this sequence say if we've got a sequence of random variables y sub n for n being 0 1 2 and so on and the moment generating functions for each of the um, y sub n's if the sequence of moment generating functions converge to a moment generating function to some other moment generating function then we also get convergence in distribution so the distribution of the y sub n's also converge to the distribution of y and so these moment generating functions kind of give us just a different way of looking at um, at our distributions and looking at them in a unique way so what happens in the world of moment generating functions is what happens in the world of distributions what happens in the world of distributions happens in the world of moment generating functions and so this will be two very very powerful tools um, that we're going to use later on in our discussions So another theorem that involves moment generating functions is what happens when we've got a series of independent random variables with our moment generating functions. Now these kinds of topics are going to come up over and over and over when we're talking about independent random variables. We're really talking about doing samplings of random variables and so this will come into play when we're really starting to talk about our statistics um, later on. So if we've got y sub 1, y sub 2, all the way up to y sub n as independent random variables and each one of the y sub i's has a moment generating function m sub i of t then for the moment generating function of the sum of those random variables so we're going to form a new random variable y that's the sum of our y sub i's then the moment generating function for our new variable y is given by the product 
of the moment generating functions for each of the y sub i's. So let's see why that might possibly be true. Well, we begin with the PDF, um, so the marginal distributions for each y sub i, so we'll denote those by p sub i. <clears throat> now the y sub i are independent, and so what that tells us is that the joint PDF um, is actually a product of all of the marginals. And so if we write out the expected value of y, is going to be the expected value of t times the sum of the y sub i's. Well, write out what that is. So that's an iterated integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the t times our sum. And then we've got a product of our marginal distributions, which is our joint distribution. So then using those properties of the exponentials, we can um, write our e to the t of the sum of the y's as a product of e to the t y sub i's. Well, as soon as we're able to do that, what we can do is break apart this iterated integral into um, a product of integrals in and of itself. So this becomes the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the t y sub 1 p sub 1 y sub 1 times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the t y sub 2 p sub 2 y sub 2 um, all the way down to e to the t y sub n p sub n dy sub n. But this is exactly what we mean by our moment generating function for y sub 1 times our moment generating function for y sub 2 all the way down to our moment generating function for y sub n. And so the moment generating function for sums of independent random variables are, is the product of the moment generating functions for the individual random variables. And then kind of the last theorem is what happens whenever we do certain transformations of our random variables. So what happens if we take our random variable y and we multiply it by a scalar? So we have a new random variable z is equal to a sub a times y. Or if we translate our random variable, so if we have a second random variable w, that's y minus k, where a and k are just real numbers. Well, what happens to the moment generating functions? Well, the moment generating function for z, which is just a times y, is just the moment generating function for y, and then we just um, substitute in a times t. Our moment generating function for w, so the moment generating function for our translation, we get this moment generating function for y times this extra factor of e to the negative tk. And so let's see why that's going to be true. Well, of course, we go back to the definition. So our moment generating function of z is going to be e, the expected value of e to the tz. Well, z is just a times y and so we're able to just put the factor of a in with the t and so that's really exactly what we would get as if we would substitute a times t into the expected value or into the moment generating function for y. Then for w we really just apply the linearity properties of our expected value. So if we look at the moment generating function for w, that's just the expected value of e to the tw, but, t but w is just y minus k. So if we distribute the t, then we can separate the exponential up into the e to the tk, e to the ty. Well, as far as the probability distribution is concerned, t is just a constant. 
Um, k is just a constant. Neither one of those have anything to do with y. So e to the negative tk is just a constant. And so again, just applying these linearity properties, it's a constant. We can pull it to the outside. So we get e to the negative tk times the expected value of e to the ty. Well, that's exactly our definition of the moment generating function of y. And so um, the moment generating function for a translation of a random variable is just e to the negative tk times the moment generating function of the original variable. And so what we've seen here is kind of a real quick introduction to moment generating functions. They're going to be incredibly powerful tools in our discussion of families of probability distributions. So later on um, in later videos, we'll really put these guys to work. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, remember those definitions. We're going to use them a whole lot more, and I will see you all next time.